Okay, before we look at the chain rule, we're going to review a little bit. What are the three criteria to show a function is continuous at a given point? Remember, a function is continuous if you can draw it without lifting up your pencil. But a lot of times we have to be able to draw, show that the function is continuous formally, not informally. Well, formally, you have to show that, first of all, you get an answer. So f of c has to exist. You also have to show that the limit for that function as x approaches c has to exist. And the most important thing is that both of these have to be equal to one another. In other words, your answer has to equal the limit as x approaches c. If this last one is not met, then you get a function that looks something like this, where you see there's an answer, there's a limit, they match up, but they are not necessarily the same. This is the key criteria to show that the function is continuous. Next problem is um, to review a little bit how to find derivatives. But in this one, you're going to have to rewrite the function as something with an exponent, because we all, the only rule we know right now is the power rule. Okay, well, 5x squared is already written with an exponent, but this 1 over x cubed is not. But remember, a division problem can be written with a negative exponent. So the function could be rewritten this way. And this leads into now we can actually do the power rule with this and realize the derivative then would be 10x to the first power. If I go 2 times 5 and subtract 1 from the exponent. But do the same thing here. I could go with negative 3 times negative 1. So let's pause the 3x. When I drop 1 from the exponent, this exponent, I'll be careful, that's to the negative 4. So my algebraic derivative would be 10x plus 3x to the negative 4 which you could rewrite the second term there as 3 divided by x to the fourth if you're not real crazy about negative exponents, but this answer is just as good. Okay, the chain rule in words, you need to memorize this, is a derivative of the outside function with respect to the inside function times a derivative of the inside function. So when I derive the outside with respect to the in, that means leave the in alone, but then multiply it by the derivative of the inside function. So basically, you don't want to do too much of this. So let's take a look at a couple examples. We will start with the third one. It's a little bit easier to see here. Um, because of the parentheses, you can see here's my inside function, and there's my outside function. So I'm going to find the derivative of this using the notation here, dy dx. I'm going to derive the outside. So 5 times, and it says with respect to the end means I leave that alone, 3x minus 8 and I drop the exponent by 1. But then i got to multiply it by the derivative of the inside, so times the derivative of 3x to the first, which is just 3. And this simplifies a little bit to 15 times 3x minus 8 to the fourth power. So again, the derivative of the outside, that's the 5 and the 4, with respect to the in, times the derivative of the in. So I'm just following the rule. Let's try the second one now, the derivative with respect to x. Notice that this notation here still means to find the derivative. All are different notations, but they all mean the same thing. Now this one's a little bit easy to determine here because cosine is my outside function, 4x cubed is my inside. So I'm going to derive the ins outside, which the derivative of cosine we found out is negative sine with respect to the inside. So remember, I'm going to leave that alone times the derivative of the inside, and I'm going to apply the power rule and get times 12x squared. And so this would be my derivative of that second function. Now the third function, or this first function, actually requires a little bit more work because it's not set up exactly right. So I'm going to rewrite this so it's set up in the more traditional way of writing this. So this will be sine 7x, the whole thing to the fifth power. That's what this 5 on the inside means, is that you're taking the whole thing. They write it this way so they're not to use as many parentheses. But it gets confusing when they write it this way because you don't know what the inside and outside function is. So always write a problem where it has the five uh, the exponent on the inside. Rewrite it outside with parentheses. Now you look here and realize, aha, here's my inside outside function, sorry. Here's my inside function. So when I go to find the derivative, I'm going to use the notation y prime. I'm going to derive the outside. 5 times, leave the inside alone, sine of 7x to the fourth power, remember I'm going to drop the exponent by 1, times the derivative of the inside. We found out the derivative of sine of 7x is cosine 7x times 7. That sine of 7x actually has an inside function too, and so that's what the 7 comes in. 
So this is my derivative written now. You could simplify this and go 7 times 5 is 35, or you can just leave it like this. And remember, there's no bonus points given for simplification, so leaving the answer like this is perfectly acceptable. Okay, let's take a look at some examples of the chain rule. So, question one, find y prime if y equals the cosine of x to the fifth power. You notice the, the fifth power is on the inside, so the trick here is to rewrite this appropriately with parentheses with the fifth power is on the outside because that's really what this equation means and then we derive this by using the chain rule so we realize the fifth power is my outside function and cosine is my inside function so we're going to derive the outside function which will be 5 times whatever to the fourth power and we're going to leave the inside alone so remember, it's the derivative of the outside with respect to the in. Times the derivative of the in, we found out the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And so there's our answer. So number two here is another chain rule problem. Sine is my outside function. 2x is my inside. So again, I always say the chain rule every time I do this. Derive the outside. The derivative of sine is cosine. Leave the inside alone. And multiply it by the derivative of the inside. And so there's my answer. Just as easy as that. Number three, here's one that has an inside and outside function that doesn't involve trig. Um, and in this case, the outside function is to the half power, and the inside function is 2x plus 3. So when I derive this, I derive the outside. So 1 half times, I leave the inside alone, 2x plus 3 to the negative 1 half power. times the derivative of the inside, times 2. And you could simplify it if you wanted to. You could just leave it like that. But if you did simplify it, this would be 2x plus 3 to the negative 1 half, because 2 times 1 half would actually cancel. Okay, for the trig equation here, they ask what do the uh, constants a, b, c, and d represent in the graph of this function? How does it change it? So this is, happens to be a cosine function. So, for example, cosine starts at 1, goes down to 0, down to negative 1, back up to 0, back up to 1. Um, so C, actually, um, is the shift up and down. And this is how I recorded it, below the up and down arrow. And I put a positive symbol here, because if, it, if it's a positive number, it will shift up. And I put a little negative symbol, because if it's a negative number, it will shift down. Um, I'm going to go to D next. D is the left and right. However, this one goes kind of counterintuitive, where the up and down shift actually makes sense. Positive goes up, negative goes down. Left and right goes against the way you would expect. You would expect the positive to go to the right, but it turns out it moves it to the left, and the negative um, moves it to the right. So that's how I put my symbols on there, so I kind of represent the shifts. B is the speed. Okay. We use this, in other words, it's uh, how fast it goes up and down. It's an indirect relationship. It gives me my period by using the formula 2 pi over b will give the period, the, which is the period is the length of one cycle. So how long does it take to complete one complete cycle? So b does not give me the period. It's an indirect relationship. But this formula here, 2 pi over b, will give me the period. A is the one that kind of actually, at least uh, uh, alphabet-wise, actually matches up. This is the amplitude. And remember, the amplitude is how tall our mountains are and how deep our valleys are. Okay? So A is the amplitude. Okay, so now we're going to find the derivative of these two functions. Be careful here. Even though the directions say power rule, power rule doesn't actually apply to this first problem. Because the first problem actually is a bunch of power rule problems. If you notice, you have a bunch of problems that have exponents. Even this one, which is 2x to the first. And the last term we have to think is 9x to the zero. So we're just going to do the power rule for each pro set problem separately. Or each term, sorry. So the derivative of the first is 12x squared, 4 times 3. And then subtract 1 from the exponent. The derivative of the next is... 3x to the negative 4 sevenths. That's a little tricky. You've got to be good with your fractions. 3 sevenths times 7 is 3. And when I subtract 1 from 3 sevenths, I get negative 4 sevenths. 
minus 27x to the negative 4, 9 times negative 3, and then subtract 1 from the next one, plus 2x to the 0, well, I'm just going to write 2, minus 9 times 0 is 0, so it's just minus 0. And so there's my derivative. The next problem, again, you have that 3 on the inside, so I'm going to rewrite it as I normally would see the exponent as outside of parentheses. So remember, the key to the these problems is to always rewrite it where the inside exponent is where you would want it to be to determine an inside and outside function. And then I can find the derivative by doing the chain rule. Derive the outside. So 5 times 3 is 15 with respect to the inside. So I leave the in alone. Remember, i got to drop the exponent by 1 times the derivative of that inside function. Derivative of sine of 4x is cosine of 4x times 4. Not worth simplifying here. You can just leave your answer like this. If you simplify and get it wrong, you're going to lose that point. So you might also just leave it like this. Okay. Next problem is just to remind yourselves how to find the velocity and acceleration for a given function. And notice this is the x of t is a distance function. So remember the velocity and acceleration is gotten by getting to both the first and the second derivative. Again, I got that darn exponent on the inside, so I'm going to rewrite this as cosine of 5t, the whole thing, to the third power. So I'm going to find the velocity of this function by deriving this, by using the chain rule like I've been doing up above. So derive the outside would be 3 times cosine 5t, drop the exponent by 1, times the derivative of that inside function, which is negative sine, whoops, forgot my negative, of 5t, times the derivative of that inside function times 5. Okay? And the acceleration would be getting gotten by deriving this again, just to remind yourself. But we don't know how to do this one yet, so we're going to hold off on that one because this has a multiplication problem in there, and so does that requires us to use a different rule, which we'll get to very, very soon. So for right now, we're just going to find the velocity function and leave the acceleration function as something to find later on.